You fell in love. You felt the urge and surge to merge, relaxing into complete faith and trust in each other. Harmony happily ever after. You honestly felt your partner was worthy of your absolute affirmation, like you could be totally honest because you were honestly crazy about them. You've been together for a while now. You still say I love you to your partner, but it's become less of a feeling and more of a ritual affirmation. You do love your partner and your partnership, but you also love yourself. You've got your own preferences, and they're not always aligned with your partners. You want to be affirming, but you also want to be honest. And these days, you don't always honestly feel affirming. There are tensions now, a tightrope walk. If you're honest but not affirming, you'll fall. If you're affirming but not honest, you'll fall. Sometimes it feels like the line is going to break and you'll fall no matter what happens. Over the years, you've both discovered ways to get what you want. One night, your partner stumbled on a way to get you to watch their show. Unconsciously, they remembered this new way to get their way. Maybe they've found ways to get their way by acting like it's something you owe them. That's moralizing, treating a preference as though it's justified by some moral law. Whether to keep the peace or because you're a bit of a softie, at least at home, susceptible to guilt about not being everything your partner thinks you should be, you let your partner get away with a lot. You start to feel bullied in your own home, like your partner's expectations have boxed you in, kept you from being who you're meant to be, or at least who you want to be. You perform a role all day at work, so you'd like to be more yourself at home. But that's not happening. At home, you feel like you're being monitored by an HR department of one, and you've already been warned that your character needs work. So be on your best behavior, at least by your partner's standards, which aren't always yours. Getting home, you feel relieved when you don't see your partner's car in the driveway. You could use some home alone time. You relish time away, but you don't take much of it because it reflects badly on your character. So you don't get much of a chance to exercise, let alone remember your preferences. Of course, partnership entails compromise. You know that. But how much? There are thoughts you're not allowed to think, but you end up thinking some of them anyway. For years, you've been asking, okay, how can I make this work? Now you're wondering, can I make this work? Because it seems like it's becoming a forced choice. Either stay partnered or be yourself. Or maybe, just maybe, you can find a way to be yourself more within your partnership. I mean, it'd be hard, but maybe it's worth a try. For that, you're going to need to get your partner to back off. If you're not already out the door, here are some context and suggestions. Zoom out. Like any two people, you and your partner are different. You have different appetites, different aptitudes, different attitudes, different options. Your partner might be great, just not a great match anymore. That happens, especially these days. We live in a vast expansion of ways to live and things to do, which increases the chance that over time, any two partners will want to take different paths. Elective mergery. Partnership is an elective, not some moral imperative. It's got to work for both of you. The goal here is to see if you can be together despite having different preferences. Consolation of thoroughness. It's worth trying to see if you can regain balance. If it fails, at least you'll have the consolation of thoroughness. It could be that you decide to leave, but you'll have more peace of mind about it if you feel like you gave your partnership your best shot. Demoralize. To make any progress, you're going to have to drop the moralizing. If you are honoring your partnership contract, the rest is usually about preferences, not morality. You have to try to demoralize, strip off that moralizing rhetoric. Look around you. Do you see how many different moral standards there are? Notice that you're always wrong by someone's moral standards. Fight fair. You know, you both might feel bullied, or at least constricted by each other's accumulated habits of persuasion, or just by the loss of autonomy within any partnership. Your partner might also be relieved to come home to find an empty house. 
Keep that in mind and strip your moralizing tendencies too. Demoralizing is demoralizing. For a bully, demoralizing, dropping the moral BS, is actually demoralizing. Without moral law supporting our preferences, all we've got left are our preferences. Bummer, I had more leverage when I pretended this wasn't about my preferences, but about morality. Up to you. If you're the kind who takes morality seriously and thinks there's only one way to live, you're the kind who is easily bullied. You got boxed into this corner by being a softy at home, probably because you're easily shameable. Repercussioning. By now, your partner is good at making you feel bad for expressing your preferences. If you start asserting yourself, you can expect a moralizing smackdown. Your partner will retaliate to put you back in the doghouse where you belong. Don't even try reasserting your preferences if you aren't cushioned to withstand the inevitable repercussions. If you don't repercussion yourself against the blowback, you'll back down. And what doesn't kill your partner's habits of dominance only makes them stronger. Ground standing. To withstand the repercussions, calmly stand your ground while letting your partner have theirs. If your partner tries to drown out your preferences with theirs, state yours, hear theirs, even restate theirs convincingly to show you heard them, and then shrug. Oh well, turns out we're two different people with different appetites, aptitudes, attitudes, and opportunities. Don't try to persuade your partner that they're wrong. There's power in letting the difference just sit there. The plotting thickens. Intimidated by your partner's eggshells and landmines, you'll probably want to be extra careful, plotting the ideal words and gestures to get through to them without provoking retaliation. All that plotting is a symptom of you being bullied, and it's not likely to work. No matter how you stand your ground, there will be blowback. Flipping to flippancy. Instead of plotting, try relaxing into being yourself more. Maybe you are more yourself in some other context. Well, reintroduce that version of you back into the partnership. You both have preferences. They aren't always the same. That's okay. You still get to be you. Show, don't tell. Don't start with a processing conversation about how from now on you're going to be different. Show that you're going to be different. Show that you're going to be you. If your partner challenges your new assertiveness, give a short, non-defensive answer. It's who you are and what you want. That's all for the kids. If you have kids, it's good for them to see you stand up for yourself. They'll be stronger, wiser adults if they don't see you or your partner as pushovers. Give and take. This isn't you saying it's your turn to be the dominant partner. You're trying to restore balance. All commitments entail compromise. You're just no longer willing to be the primary compromiser. Worst case. When you're venturing into something risky like this, it's useful to ask yourself a non-rhetorical, what's the worst that could happen? Picture the worst downside and see if you can handle it. It might keep you from taking the risk, or it might make you more confident to try, since you've already figured out how you could handle the worst possibility. Compatibility and how you negotiate the incompatibilities. With your preferences on the table, there will be new stuff to renegotiate. Now that you're being more real at home, the question is whether you have the compatibility to negotiate the incompatibilities. If you don't have that, you may decide that you prefer ending over pretending you're someone you're not. Having tried to reassert yourself and failed to make it work, at least you'll have the consolation of thoroughness. Well, it turns out few people in the world are into as much raw introspection about the human condition as I am. And if you're one of them, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And that's another thing. I'm for hire. I do strategic consulting on dealing with life's tough judgment calls and dealing with total jerks. My email's down below. Get in touch for a free sample session. Thanks.